Hey guys, welcome back. I'm so excited about this video. It has to be one of my all-time favorite videos that I have ever filmed. Um, it is a houseplant slash frog tour of a place called Frog Daddy in Gastonia, North Carolina. And they sell rare, uncommon plants, cool dart frogs. I mean, this place was incredible. Now they have a ton of rare and uncommon plants and a lot of them are for sale. So what I recommend doing as you're watching this video, if you see a plant you are interested in, is to take a snapshot of it and then you can reach out to the owner frog daddy alex and take it from there i've included all of his information in my description below for you guys now i learned so much during this episode so big thank you to alex for letting me come out so i can share this with you all i hope you love it as much as i did if you're new to my channel welcome my name is ashley and as you can see i am obsessed with all things house plants i am admittedly a crazy plant person so if that brings a smile to your face you may want to subscribe to my channel that way my episodes will show up in your news feed i'm also on instagram and absolutely love my Instagram plant community. So maybe give me a follow on there as well. And a big thank you to our sponsor for this video, glassesusa.com. I'm such a huge fan. I have so many pairs of glasses from them. I am so excited to share them with you guys. Glassesusa.com offers prescription glasses and sunglasses at up to 70% off retail price. I love them because I can shop for all my eyewear needs online at affordable prices without leaving my home. Now glassesusa.com was my first time ever ordering glasses online. I'd only ever purchased glasses at doctor's offices. It was always very incredibly expensive, but I liked that I could, you know, physically try them on. I can definitely say with confidence that glassesusa.com has you covered um, for a number of reasons. First of all, it's a risk-free shopping experience. They offer free shipping and returns, 100% money back guarantee, full refund within the first 14 days of the product being delivered, and a 365 day product warranty. Second, and my personal favorite, is the virtual try-on tool. So this is how you make sure the glasses that you're interested in actually look good on you. You use their virtual try on tool you take a picture of yourself and you can see all of the different glasses um, on your face third is their price point like i said i'd only ever ordered at doctor's offices before and they would run upwards of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a single pair of you know prescription glasses a complete pair of eyeglasses and sunglasses starts at only 30 dollars basic prescription lenses are included with every frame including premium brands like ray-ban and oakley and lastly is their selection glassesusa.com offers over 9,000 different styles of eyeglasses and sunglasses they have their in-house brands as well as their designer brands. Now all of the different glasses that I'm showing you, I have opted to go with blue light blocking lenses and it allows me to sleep better, have better productivity, helps prevent headaches, helps prevent eye strain. Now I do wear my contacts all the time and glassesusa.com is the perfect place to stock up on all of your contact lenses needs. They offer 25% off all of the different brands. Now to get started like I did, click the link in my description below and I recommend starting with the virtual try on tool. Also, I've included links to all of the different glasses and styles that I've shown in this episode. All right, guys, I'm so excited and ready to share this amazing, amazing tour with you with Frog Daddy and Alex, the owner. Hope you enjoy. My name is Alex. Uh, I run Frog Daddy LLC out here in Bessemer City. Um, we're basically a vivarium supply company that does um, anything from frogs, rare plants, to natural resources. Um, Right here is kind of right when you walk through the doors, kind of our display enclosure. Right here, it's 360 gallons. There's a lot of rare plants in here, such as the Peruvian form Monstera obliqua. I was just saying, this is the yeah. first time I've seen one of these. I don't mean to interrupt, I'm sorry. It's just so exciting. Not this is incredible. Uh, we have like Anthurium warocuinum, um, Philodendron upii several oh, yeah, bull lake species there. of begonias, metellocalyx, el choco reds, varicosums. You'll see a lot of varicosums today. <laughs> it's actually wow. quite a common plant in the vivarium hobby. Um, fr dart froggers got their hands on it really early on, so we tend to have a lot of varicosum. Um, so sorry if it gets a little redundant. <laughs> So there's frogs in here too, I think. There I are. Saw. Those are Ufaga pamilio bastimentos. Uh, those are obligate egg feeding frogs. So what that means is they feed their young unfertilized eggs and that's all they can eat. So their tadpoles cannot eat anything else. So you can't actually hand raise them. A lot of uh, times when you have frogs, you hand raise the tadpoles. With these guys, you can't actually do that. The parents raise them, which is really cool. It's called biparental care. So the males and females play a role in having the young 
grow up to froglets. That's pretty cool. So yeah, we just take the little babies out and then raise them up and they're ready to sell. I just love how you have the frogs with the plants and it's such yeah. a neat like natural habitat and, and the plants are so happy and thriving. Yes, they are Look doing, they're living their best life. They are, <laughs> Besides some minor snail damage, but if you guys have ever gone in situ, if you've ever gone to like Costa Rica or Panama, you'll see that the plants are torn to shreds um, from herbivory. Really? Uh, yeah, oh, definitely. So in our industry, in our little hobby that we have in the rare plant hobby, we like to everything to be pristine and perfect and Instagram worthy, but that's not always the reality. So yeah, I think it's cool to see kind of both sides of that. So up top here we have, it's a pretty basic plant, but it looks really good there. It started as like a really small sprig, but it's um, uh, Begonia Blazing Sun. It's a very nice hybrid. It gets so incredible color and highlight. So I gave it a nice, it gives it a nice break in the green, which I think is kind of important. Um, this is a forgetty eye. Uh, it's a white, uh, it's actually the silver form, not the white stripe. Sorry, I have the white stripe in the other room. Then I have some biophytum. They look like little palm trees. These are not so little though, actually. Uh, biophytum can actually be much smaller than that. And we might get to see some of those today too. This is a Peperomia Antoniana. It's not doing its best there because it's getting, the light's getting blocked, so it's a little leggy. Uh, this is the Peruvian Oblico here. This is a Marmoratum, an Anthurium Marmoratum. Nice velvety leaf there. Um, this is an acutifolium, very nice long strap leaf philodendron. This is a Calvo accessifolia, which seems to be a favorite for the snails, as you can see the breaks in the leaves. This is a Gobinia section begonia. It's called uh, Morinde Blue. It has a nice blue sheen to it. I'm not sure if you can capture that, but I have a lot of those. Those are one of my favorites. I can't remember what type of microfern that is. Um, but I think it's a diplasium. This is a Maldonado. You can see this one grows really fast. That's a, another Gobinia section begonia. It's actually a, um, an anthurium that I don't know what it is. I just kind of threw it in there. It's maybe a Mahare or something like that. Not real sure. Got into trade, threw it in there. It's doing okay. So it will stay for now. Um, this is begonia variabilis. This is actually a tuberous species. Uh, which is kind of insane having it planted not in the ground where it can form a tuber. Um, so hopefully it'll be good. Uh, this is more Antoniana. This is a Anthurium moraquinum. That's a really nice leaf. Still immature foliage though, so hopefully it'll get a nice bigger one coming out. This is Begonia microsperma times stadii. One of my favorite, absolute favorite species of begonias. Uh, it's a very nice hybrid. Stays pretty small and has a nice uh, contrast. This is one of my favorite plants too. I love Natilla calyx uh, because I love bullet species. They have really nice flowers and they have amazing textures on their leaves. But yeah, I have other anthuriums in here. I have a philodendron UPI, have some ficus uh, species Borneo. This is another gobinia section begonia. It's called Dodsonii. Um, and then I have some bromeliads here, a Hoya, um, <laughs> and Hoya imbricata that's not getting enough water, so he's going to need some help. Uh, and then your classic varicosum here, really shiny leaf. Um, and then just some random like Margravia species. These are shinglers that uh, some people may not be too familiar with. Uh, they're some of my favorite, uh, but they shingle up the background, just kind of like this Hoya here. And then down here, there's this El Choco Red. That's immature foliage. Uh, I can show you guys a mature one later on. This is a Forgetii times Magnificum. Little dry. You can see he's kind of, uh, he wants to be a little, little bit more uh, moist there. So in this kind of natural setting, sometimes you have plants that get too much water, not enough water, and it kind of just whatever grows and thrives will grow and thrive. And that's kind of the system that works naturally in situ. So we kind of mimic that with some of our larger enclosures. Well, as you know, everyone's into the Ikea greenhouse cabinets. Yes. And so yes, you'll have to are. give some pointers on, <laughs> on terrariums. Yes, terrariums are my specialty. That's, that's, that's what we do. Sun has some Melanochrysum down there, Pavanina. Um, 
some nice Rifidophora versus DGI there, and then a Ficus velosa, which is a really uh, pubescent species with very long trichomes. So Look at those fuzzy guys. It looks really cool. Yeah. That's the layman term. Yeah, for no, fuzzy guys. Just yeah, said fuzzy, fuzzy guys. guys. Perfect. No, it's all good. That's good. And what are those back there? Um, we can actually Let's open this guy up. Okay. Let's see if we can find a frog. Are those melanochrysum? Oh, here's one. This is actually the oh most gosh. expensive frog in oh our in our facility. Oh my goodness. It's a Histrionica blue. It's a large Please. Ufaga. Let's see if I can get him up here. Oh gosh, I'm scared he's gonna escape. Oh no, he's good. <laughs> but yeah, those guys are uh, quite the pretty penny. Oh, he's so beautiful. Very exquisite. Very gorgeous frogs. Hi, Again, hi. these frogs take care of their own young by feeding unfertilized eggs. That's why these bromeliads are here. Um, so they transport the tadpoles on their backs, deposit them in the bromeliads, and then feed them the eggs. Wow. So, but yeah, this is a cissus discolor. It's a really nice, really nice one, uh, in my hey. opinion. It's a little different than some of the other ones you see. Um, this, that's actually a Margravia L. Coca. I put that on my Instagram the other day. It's a really nice Margravia. And yeah, this is a Melanochrysum down here. I'll put your Instagram. Oh, on yeah. here as well so everyone can see. Perfect. Yeah, there's this is a varicosum black. Oh. Um, so that's a really cool specimen. The leaves usually stay about that size and they're very dark. That's so cool. I yeah. haven't seen one of these before. Yeah, right? varicosum blacks are really rare. The purple back is not as rare, but the blacks blacks are hard to find. There are already a load of plants I haven't seen before. <laughs> this is so exciting. Oh yeah. We've got a lot of weird stuff. Oh yeah. look, he's going into his little, yep. his little house. His little crevice there. His little crevice. <laughs> I wasn't recording, can you say that one more time? Yeah, sure. So it was $3,500 for this pair of frogs. Yeah, so this is the breeding facility. We have 264 and counting enclosures all the way down and all the way around, but we'll get to it. Um, we have 128 different species of frogs here. And our plant cap is a around a thousand different species of plants Goodness. in this building so yeah it's incredible there's a lot of stuff hidden in nooks and crannies you'll see like a florida beauty right here just kind of chilling in one of the tanks i'd say you win the title <laughs> of best kept secret yes this is best incredible. kept secret that's very true so we do have quite a few things Look at that little guy down there. <laughs> do you have a favorite frog? A favorite frog, yeah. Uh, I do have a favorite frog and we'll actually get to it down that way. You'll have to point it out. I will point it out. Um, so we do a lot of different plants here. We do a lot of aeroids. We do a lot of begonias. Begonias are some of my favorite. That's a Brevirimosa subspecies exotica. You guys are probably familiar with them. Very hot pink foliage. Um, so a lot of the gabinia section begonias are also a good favorite. Um, you can see them scr scrambling up the sides of the tanks. Wow. So you would say begonias are your all-time favorite? Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk about begonias a lot more than I should maybe, but we have entire propagation vivo suns full of just begonias. So it's it's a little crazy. Yes, but I, I like can't it. wait to show your Mother, yes. oh, the mother, plant yeah. Area. Do you want to do that the... next? Sure, you want to go through that? <laughs> Let's go look. So, some of these are just bins. Oh, yeah, show your just um... bins of random things. Um, they have a lot of like uh, random propagules of uh, Raphidophora here. These are Vestigii right here. These are really, really nice species of Raphidophora that most wow. people are not familiar with. So a lot of this is actually going to be for sale. Um, this is a Raphidophora species Ryu Blue. I was actually one of the first um, in the country to get this plant. Uh, it's easily worth four or five hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, it's actually a blue specimen of a Raphidophora, which is almost unheard of. So that's my subtle flex. But after that, it's just <laughs> mostly. Mostly um, mid-range terrarium specimens in there. But yeah, so all these bins are just full of like peperomias, aeroids, all sorts of sonorillas. Um, you have like a propagule bin over here of like Ardisia and Labisia for anybody that's into terrariums. 
but in Elastostemma. So just random words I'm throwing out. Beautiful. But yeah. So they're terrarium plants. You know. So if you don't have a terrarium, you should get one because there's a lot of cool plants that can really only be kept in that high humidity environment and they may not acclimate very well to the household condition. But here is the mother plant Vivo Sun. So we have a lot of Vivo Suns, these compounds that are spread throughout the facility. We think, think we have eight or nine of them now here. But yes, these are all the mother plants and it is oh kind of a goodness. tripping hazard, but <laughs> yeah, oh, look at so that. everything from Homolamina to Hoffmania to Begonia to Monstera. There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, don't know if I can really navigate through here too well, but some of our like flagship plants that have been on the Instagram page have been this Albo that's really nice. It's got about seven leaves now, waiting to grow it out. It's so beautiful. I love the... Yeah, it's the... got such clean lines it most does. of the time. It's a, it's a gorgeous specimen. Look at it. But yeah, the... Um, some of the war ox are getting getting bigger. Hopefully this leaf will outperform this one here. Well I keep cutting them. So Sorry, show me again. This war ox, this war oh, we ate them right here. Um, this is a dark form, a true dark form. And then we have a true Nero VTI over there. Hopefully the leaves will get a little bit larger. Look at those choco red. Yes. Is that what is, that is? Yes, this is a choco oh, red. This is one it. of our mother plants here. Beautiful, wow. beautiful red backs to them. Um, the stems are gorgeous. This is just an overall gorgeous plant. If you guys haven't gotten one, they are definitely worth the money. Um, if you have some space, they can get big. And when they get big, that is when they shine. Uh, that was a new leaf. I just posted that. It's, it's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. A lot of these are begonias. It's like a Draco Pelta here. Got. Just like standing here with my mouth open. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the chlorostricta reds. They get very big actually. Look at that if one. given the given the right environment. Pavaninas, the one that uh, flash blue, this is like the peacock begonia. So those are beautiful as well. But of course uh, I'm so really much. partial to them. <laughs> Do you have a favorite begonia? Oh, man. It honestly I I besides this there are so many kinds of begonias every time I think I have a favorite mm -hmm. there's more that I didn't know about <laughs> so we're almost at a hundred species of begonias oh now. my goodness so we're getting pretty close to that cusp but yeah that's there's how a I am a lot too. of weird I can't weird have a favorite stuff. yeah it's, it's hard so to pick many. favorites it really is there's so Depends many cool plants day. yeah so Golly. it is tough to choose yeah, some of my favorite aeroids are forgetty eyes. Anything that's forgetty eye, I'm super happy about. We have our big, uh, big silver stripe up here. It's huge. It's getting there. It's getting there. I'm hoping that it throws a bigger leaf because I keep chopping it to sell it. So I'm putting my foot down now. I really want it to get massive. Here's some of our dark form here. We have some standard forgetty eyes down there. You can't really see it. But yeah, you can see we're kind of out of room here. We need to add another shelf and then a table. After that, I mean, we're still gonna be full. And these are just all basically copies of what we have in the facility, but it's not all inclusive. A lot of stuff can only survive in bins and terrariums. Whereas this room does get a little bit of airflow and it does dry out. It's very wet right now because we just watered it. Look at that one with like the red around the yeah. outside. And this one with the bright green. Yes, the Persian brocade is a very popular species that we have. But yeah, what is you'll this fall. One? Um, I'd have to look. I think it's a the amount of film African Fantasy, which is actually surprisingly rare now. So that's definitely something we've kept under wraps for a while. Look at all your anthuriums. Yeah, we do have a lot of anthuriums. My private collection at home is a lot better, but 
We won't have so to talk about that. I do have a private well. collection. Yes. Oh. That's where my really rare stuff is. <gasps> That's uh, not not for show. I was gonna bring some, but then I forgot. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I've got what is some. this one? Um, which one here? This one? This is a tripartum, tripartum. It might, okay, it's not a red back. So it's just a tripartum. It's a philodendron. There's so many that I'm Yes, just, there's just. I, the I'm more so you look, the more you find. I love plants. I think that plants bring people a lot of happiness. It can also bring you a lot of sadness when they die. But, <laughs> so don't worry, everybody kills plants. Um, I'm sure you guys know that, but I've killed Oh man, I've killed a lot of plants in my career. <laughs> a lot of plants that I was very sad about killing. Um, but once you get the hang of it, you know, and you get the right environments, it can be very, very rewarding. There's a lot of Milanos back there that I've just constantly chopped, so <laughs> they're trying to recover. There's a ton of tanks, there's a ton more tanks. These are some of the bigger frogs we have. These are terribilis. <gasps> oh you might be able to get God. a good shot of them. <laughs> so those are like orange blackfoots. They're philobates. These are the most toxic vertebrates in the entire world. Oh my um, goodness. They're not toxic in captivity. Just for anybody that wants to know, none of How these dart frogs are toxic in captivity. Really? They're only toxic from their diet, their native diet. So if wow. they're not eating their native diet and they're just eating wingless fruit flies, which is what we feed them, they are not toxic anymore. So they sequester all those alkaloids actually from plants. So it goes up the food chain, they start in plants, they accumulate in ants, beetles, and millipedes, and then the frogs eat those and sequester the toxins that way. So don't be afraid, these aren't gonna hurt you. I wouldn't be in a facility with 2,000 poisonous frogs. <laughs> so there's some nice, nice plants up there as well. Some nice moss wall, some liverworts growing up there. It's a really nice spotted sonorilla, Begonia Cleopatra. I always put the coolest tanks where you can't see them. Tell me some of your favorites. Yeah, the Begonia Microsperma times Stadia is one of my favorite begonias. Varicosums will always be a fan favorite for me. They grow fast. They have a really nice surface area for egg laying. And other than that, they're just gorgeous. Can't get enough of them. They are. Yeah. They're one of my favorites too. Yeah. They're gorgeous. But we do have like, um, this is a tank I planted recently. You can see the difference between something I just planted and something that's been planted for months and months. That's a variegated eight Sony eye. That's another uh, <laughs> rare plant. The people that like rare plants. All of these are so, Yeah. I mean, this, shocking, your collection. Yeah, there's a Rafidophore tenuous in there. Okay. It's a Piper. Just uh, casually, but, yeah. these plants, just, you know. Cryptantha, there's a begonia like Anira. That's a micro species. There's Tropelia folia growing, starting to grow. But this is a Rifidophora tenuous. Just a little baby cut. And there's a, this is a Philodendron mini, mini Santiago. Most people have no idea what that plant is. That's a Vivarium dart frog kind of-esque plant that's not really in cultivation. Wow. So there's a lot of cool specimens in there. Monstera subpanata is the one staring you in the face there. And then the Margravia in the back, that salmon colored shingler, is actually called large salmon oh, yeah. because a lot of Margravia don't flower, so we can't identify. They do flower, but we have never seen them flower before, so we can't ID them. Um, so a lot of them have trade names. Kind of like philodendron for, for a, until they are specifically identified. They just get whatever name people slap slap a label on. How did you get into houseplants? Houseplants? Oh, you said man. since middle school or something. Yes, right? I just love plants. I mean, who couldn't love? The diversity of plants is insane. Yeah, this is a Begonia bipinatophyta. One of the, one of the best selling species, but yeah. I mean, you look at plants, it always made me happy to be around plants. I think a lot of people can say the same thing. Yeah, me too. Uh, Ever since I was little, it was just nature and yep. plants. Nature, and it animals. starts with nature. And then I, I figured out, you know, you could have the frogs with the plants and then the whole vivarium thing just, I was on a kick with vivariums and then it just kind of snowballed. 
in college. Um, I was sitting in the back of the classroom and I was curious if you could ever have poison dart frogs. Don't know why I thought that, but I looked it up. Because they're it, awesome. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I was just like, I wonder if you could own these. These don't take any permits to own or anything like that, because like I said, they're not toxic. They're completely harmless frogs. So bought some from Josh's and then all of a sudden, you know, eight years later I have a ton. So I've been in dark frogs about a decade. I've been in plants about 15 years. I worked in two greenhouses for eight years total. Um, cultivated a variety of plants, mostly begonias, go figure. Uh, but yeah, did inventory, lots of stuff. So I got to learn a lot about different types of plants and that's kind of how that got me into things. Yay. Yeah, that tank is really nice too. Yeah. Has a lot of very colorful bromeliads on the top there. And some nice moss, very nice uh, floor begonias there. These are called monolinas. I'm a big fan of monolina. This is called species red. It's almost an iridescent, has a purple back to it. Hard to capture, but I don't know <laughs> Sorry, if you I'm can. all up in your business. No, no, it's okay. Like, look at that. I just okay, kind of manhandle them, but yeah. Look at the flower. Yep, they flower readily and they self. So they'll self seed and then we have the seed, the seed pods, which actually I'm gonna take these out because these are ready. I'll give them to my oh, guy, Jack. Let's see. But these are seed pods and these seed pods are ready. You can see the, the start of what will be larger monolina reds. Oh. There's probably 30 or 40 plants in these seed heads, so I'm gonna hand these off and then we'll propagate those and that's how we get more of those. Do you do anything special to get them to we don't. be pollinated? We don't, we literally, to, to pollinate? Yeah. No, the fruit flies that we feed the frogs actually pollinate almost everything in the tanks for us. Look at this Which guy. is super nice. That's cool. Yeah. Do the frogs take care of most of your pests? Yes, most of them, but not all of them. Yeah. Not all of them. Unfortunately, they are, they're not picky eaters per se, but I wish they would eat things like mealybugs and thrips and things like that, but they do not. How do you? How do we combat those yeah. beneficials? So we use, we are, we should be at this point partnered with Arbico. Um, I love that. Yeah, so we order beneficial mites, a Swartzkii mites, which take care of thrips. Uh, we order uh, lacewing eggs, mm -hmm. which take care of white flies, other, uh, other things like that. So basically those are the two biggest problems that we've, that we've encountered. We haven't really had mealybugs, never really had that issue. Um, and other than that, I mean, snails and slugs, unfortunately, those are really hard to combat. We can use a product called Sluggo, and that's actually not harmful for wildlife, so that's a good thing. We can actually put Sluggo in the tanks. The slugs eat it, and then they die of desiccation, which just means they dry up. But if you're looking to sell somebody a plant, a 5% bleach solution for about 10 minutes works for most things that kills all the eggs uh, so most of our stuff if it does come from a tank what we'll do is we'll take a cutting out of a tank we'll wash it in our washroom do a dip put it in there treat it in quarantine then bring it over here and then eventually it'll it'll pop off to be sold okay. this is kind of like some of our stuff that's ready to sell um, stuff that's already Ooh. been sold so if you want to step in here, there's some cool, some cool trays Aww. of stuff. It's a nice chlorostricta red. Oh, that's so pretty. Yeah. It's a taco night here. But yeah, some of our stuff's already sold and that usually goes up here. Here's a really nice Milana Bolada for people that haven't really seen one. Oh, yes. holy cow. Yeah, so that's a really cool terrarium plant. Uh, Very bullet leaves. This is the first time seeing this one. Yeah. It's one of those I stare at on Instagram. Very from cool. Time to time. So many of these. Yeah, and there's a geogenensis. Nice central sinus. I like forgetty eyes, anthurium forgetty eyes. So anything with a central sinus, I'm What's all about it. What's a central sinus? This is a, a sinus right here. It's where the pedial meets the leaf. Um, so this stem part meets okay. the leaf, and that's called the sinus. So it's centralized instead of being off to the side like this. It's in the middle of the leaf, which I just like, I don't know why I like it so much. Yeah, but I like that about the Forgetti Eye too. I yes. just never knew what it was called. That's what it is. Okay. So yeah, we have all sorts of stuff. Mm. 
It's philodendron. This is an equilaterium, paper thin. Here's like a little white night baby that we sold. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we've got them like floating around here and there. Wow, just. But yeah. <laughs> I love how casual you are about well, it. Well, yeah. It, a lot of people have been doing it a long time, and I've been in it. I've, I am still a youngster when it comes to that, but over my years, we've, you know, plants have not always been so expensive. So it was not hard to get some of this stuff. I mean, I remember in 2018, 2019, you could buy like an anthurium mesa spades for like $10. Oh my God. They were tissue culture. You know? So, and then I saw last year, thousand bucks. I've never seen anything besides like a cryptocurrency that has a hundred X on value ever. So it is kind of, it's crazy because a lot of people are more of that new age Instagram, whoa, plants 2020. And they're used to seeing these crazy prices for everything. Notably, I bought a ton of stuff during COVID too. Trust me, I got kind of got more into plants at the same time. So I, I spent my fair share. Um, I'm not going to act like I had a ton, ton of plants before COVID. I had like three to 400 species, but I at least doubled that in the last two years. So, but yeah, wow. so you can see we have like kind of, things are a little sporadic here because we're mostly online. So that's the kind of thing to expect if you do come. There is a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff to thumb through and look at. But yeah, it's not like your typical nursery where you go in and you're like, see, oh, this is a blankety blank and here's the price. You know, you kind of have to like walk with me, talk with me. You know, we haggle, negotiate. You can buy stuff that's half propped. You can buy a leaf from me and sell people like leaves of peperomias for a dollar or two. So it's like a different, it's a more personalized experience here. And I do like that. I like that too. So it's different. I love taking people on the tours of the facility, seeing all the frogs. I it's saw that definitely you can fun. make appointments oh, online yeah. or you know through you to Absolutely. schedule appointments. Look at that Edinsoni eye. Yes, there's another one right there. Yeah. It's got some pretty good variegation. Sometimes it'll throw a half moon. Usually it doesn't, it's three quarters, which is always irritating, but we can all dream. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna try and see if my favorite frogs are out, but they yeah. don't look like they're out. Is this, the, yeah. is this where they live? This is where they live. Your favorite frogs. And I'm are. so upset. Oh no. We'll find my other favorite frogs, don't worry. <laughs> we have, I have several. It's a cool anthurium flexile. You don't see that often. Oh, wait. I'm a professional frog wrangler. And I'm gonna say that and he's gonna jump out. Is that what you have on your business card? Professional frog ring? Yeah, I should. I might as well. But Let's that is a little. granulifera osa. Wow. Also extremely expensive frog. Beautiful. I got a 2.2 for about 2200. There's a lot of flies in here. You'll have to excuse its feeding day. So there's always some residual flies left over. I love it. Very surprised he isn't calling. Yeah, so they'll scale trees with tadpoles on their backs and deposit into Brahm. So this kind of mimics that on a small scale. Oh yeah, okay. Here's some. Oh my gosh! Look at this guy. These are powdered. These are Delphi babies. They're beautiful. These are the largest of wow. the dart frogs, Dendrobates tinctorius. Um, we have about 20 morphs of those. These are table mountains. Big eaters, big frogs, still don't like to be handled, go figure, but <laughs> these are like the star of our facility. I don't know why. They just, they get so much oh, love. Oh, they're so beautiful. These are Patricia's. They're big. Okay. That's my female. She's very large. Look at her. She's a little chunky. She's really chunky. She probably has eggs. <laughs> okay. So that's the female and then the male is the more tapered one over there. But these are Dendrobates tinctorius as well. So they're the larger frogs. But these are called Patricia, because Patricia is the person that discovered them. So you can see how obese she is right now. She's definitely carrying eggs. Yeah. So she'll drop those eggs underneath these coconut huts inside these petri dishes. Okay. And they'll lay eggs, and then the, um, they'll basically crawl up on the male's back. The male will deposit them in that pool, and then we'll take them out. So it's a pretty cool life cycle to be able to see that. Do you name any of your frogs? I don't. I have over 2,000 individuals. It would be very difficult to do so. 
Do you name your plants? Um, that would be even harder. <laughs> I'm at that point too. I saw me. Yeah, I, I passed that. I, that ship had sailed a long time <laughs> ago. There are some that are more beginner. Yes, and then... the big ones. Very bold, always out, easy. If it hops out, you can catch it. If this, if the little ones hop out, they're very hard to catch. That was my question. What do you yes. do when they hop out? Well, it, it happened today already, so it happens almost every day. It's, it's a thing. It's a thing. Those are cobalts. The Dendrobates tinctorius are some of the best beginner species. We usually recommend getting two and putting them in a nice 1824, which is kind of the size of tank that you're. That's more standard in our facility. This is an 1824, 18, 1824 18, Exoterra. Uh, that's a great size for two frogs. And it gives you space to get all those plants in there because you get a small tank, you know, it's hard to plant very well, you know, sure. and we love plants. So it's- I'd love to hear your process on- Building, yes. oh my goodness. Yeah, I've, it's it can, be, it can be strenuous. I mean, something like this is a more time, time consuming, thing whereas something like this is just yeah I threw up two halves of cork bark and called it a day what um, do you use on the bottom of these terrariums a variety of things this is leca they provide a negative space for water to flow through mm -hmm. so that the substrate doesn't get saturated if your substrate is always full of water and soggy and anoxic it starts to build up anaerobic bacteria which can cause um, infections so it also builds up fungal bodies, which can also give frogs foot rot and other diseases. So you want to make sure that the drainage layer is serving its purpose in trapping water um, and moving that water out of the substrate. What plant is this one? Um, that is an Esplundii, a Anthurium Esplundii. Very nice strap wave. Pretty. And how about this Not, one in the corner? Uh, that is actually a warrock. It's just a baby. Okay, I thought. I <laughs> yeah, thought it's a warrock. So. It's a standard form. How about this one? That is a melanoneuron. It might be melanoneuron aff. It's a type of philodendron. Nice ovate leaf there. And I've got a ton of little shinglers spread throughout there. What's that one? That is an um, Amedrium zippelanium variegata. So it's a variegated Amedrium. Wow. So those are pretty cool. How about the plants in this one? Ah, so that's a Geogenanthus popwegii. Po yeah, that is a seersucker plant. Very cool textured leaf. Um, they actually do propagate from leaf. If you guys ever want to try, you can take the pedial, stick the leaf in some sphagnum moss and give it about five months because they take forever to propagate from leaves. Easier to propagate from stem. This is a Mamii af. Uh, we're actually, nobody in this facility, even Siddharth, has tried to identify this plant. None of us can ID it. It is not a mammy eye. Um, it has no variation in the leaf, but the pedial is very similar. Um, there's a Hestatum, Silver Sword. You guys are probably very familiar with that plant. That's right there. Um, a lot of microferns, microgramma species number one. Microgramma and other microferns are given obscure names because they haven't been identified taxonomically. Uh, Philodendron teramiscum is the one in the back kind of creeping up. Uh, that's like kind of the lancelet leafed one. Syngonium rei up there. There's a squam pedialatum at the top. And then I literally planted oh, just random stuff up there in the corner of Begonia Manaeus. So do you have a degree in biology? I do. Or? I have two degrees. Okay. So my first degree, I have a BS in biology. It was obtained from Queens University of Charlotte. Then I went to grad school at Eastern Michigan. Um, got my master's in EEOB, so that's Ecology, Evolution, and Organismal Bio. So it's a combo degree. Um, then I came back to teach at Queens. So I was a professor for about three years before I had to retire from that very, very early. Um, did not intend on retiring, but obviously that's something that just happens since, uh, you know, the workload was just too much. Launching a business and teaching a full load was impossible, so I had to give it up. Which, I... sorry, the morning geckos are fighting, <laughs> so that was kind of cool. I saw that. Yeah, they were like... little, little uh, tussle there for territory. <laughs> I do miss teaching, I do miss education. Um, that is definitely 
one of my first loves. These are breeders. These are fully grown. Since this is discolored. Yes, that's one of my favorite plants. You see a lot of that <laughs> repeated throughout the facility. They're so pretty, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. These are southern variabilis. These are some of the most beautiful frogs, in my opinion, that exist. Oh yeah, I saw this one on your Instagram. Mm. I couldn't stop staring Man, at it. Man, they're just awesome. <laughs> Some Vardero oh. imitators, very beautiful. Next to a nice begonia versicolor red. Is that what this one over here is? Uh, yeah, this plant oh, right this there. Okay, That's yeah. a Peperomia turboensis. Oops. Yeah, there's a lot of cool plants in that. Yeah. This is a um, Hoffmania refulgens times uh, Gitzbergii. Gitz uh, it's a nice, nice hybrid. That's also on my Instagram. It is one of the most beautiful plants. I have our mother plant in this tank over here, actually. It's where I take my cuttings from. I mean, it's second wow. to none when it comes to the vibrance of the, the leaves. I mean, they're, they, they're so cool. This was cut about a week ago, and it's already forming those um, offsets, but the, the leaves are just magical. I mean, there's no other term for it. They're so velvety. Oh my god. Uh, they reflect the light at the top, kind of like a mountain crest. So yeah. they give off a really nice dimensional shimmer. So they're gorgeous. There's some cool airways in this tank. Wow. This is a mini Ecuador um, philodendron varicosum. This is a Beautiful. fuzzy petiole. Nice plant there. What's that one there? That this is a really ficus fuzzy. villosa. Yeah, that's the one up front that we saw that's earlier. Right. Yeah. So that's a cool plant. And I just tore the back off. This is a Cebu blue. That's okay. I thought it looked today. familiar. Yep. That is one that is definitely a more common species that people. Look at that new leaf. Yeah, that's a begonia oh stadii. So that's one of the parents for the my one of my favorite begonias. What's this one, this leaf? That is actually a, that's that's actually a fuzzy petiole as well. Fuzzy petiole. Yep, it was imported, so it was imported uh, in 2019, I believe, as varicosum, but it's obviously not varicosum. Okay. So we still have no idea on that one. There's like a pink princess and tons of white knights everywhere. <laughs> I just kind of threw them in there to propagate. They're happy. Yeah, I've already taken top cuts off of them. So look at them. They're just busting out. Whatever yes. you're doing, the plants love it. <laughs> humidity, humidity, humidity. That's the trick. Yes. Oh my gosh. They're jungle plants. We try and put them in our houses and they just are like, what the heck? Yeah, they're not feeling it's not it. My, not, my, not my spot. To Monte Cristo. These are some of my favorites too. I love all the small frogs. Yeah kind of partial to them. What about the small frogs is I don't know, man. This, there's it's so crazy to me that they're that small and they're just fully grown. <laughs> they lay eggs and like they're just I don't know. I love the fact that something so tiny can be so complex. That? That's a squamiferum. It's just immature leaves. Okay. So that will get that big horse head kind of uh, I like looking. That. Yeah. My favorite part of the fuzzy stems on the Yes, leaves. yes. The the pedial pubescence is really nice. Um, this is a Amedrium zipolanium. It's a pretty cool Amedrium species here. Flowers. These are stadii, true stadii. They are gorgeous. I just actually chopped one of the biggest leaves off the other day. Sacrificed it to propagation. Sacrifice. The yeah. sacrifices you, we must make. Yeah. <laughs> And there's a philodendron campus portoium in the okay. back there. Yeah. I have a little baby on those. Yep. I mean, they stay, for us, they usually, they rarely get that nice bell shape of the mature leaf. Mm -hmm. They always stay in immature foliage around here. I'm not really sure why. They grow really tall. Um, I still can't get them into the bell shape, which is kind of what the goal is for campus. Um, this is another Natilla calyx species right here. Very bumpy leaves, really nice green, but love those. That's a begonia, actually. That's begonia glabra. Oh, really? A lot of people are not familiar that that's a begonia, too. Oh. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of begonias. This is like a scutifolia here. It's a smaller species of begonia. 
it's a little less impressive, but it's a good side. It's a good side piece. So pretty. <laughs> and they flower very frequently. <laughs> yeah, I use side piece. I don't know. Probably wasn't the best word to use for that, but you know. I'm good. here for it. It's like in her nasty eye. Oh wow. Nice wavy pedial there. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and there's a baby frog. Sorry, I always try and catch the baby frogs if I can. We want to get them out of frog the frog catcher in action. Out of the parent tank. Put them like close to my chest, but that's a baby. And so we just we literally take babies right out of the tank. So this was raised probably in one of those bromeliads there. And then, um, yeah, so I will have to deal with this guy. That's a Brevis pathum. That's a type of philodendron, very, very highly desired right now. That's my only one in the entire facility. I so it has like silver. Yeah, it's a silver speckly variegation in the center of the, towards the center of the leaves. And how about so, this, looks like That's actually, a, it is a Begonia pavanina. So that's a, again one of my favorite species. So it appears in many enclosures. Um, I can see why. Yeah. It's a little columnea back there. It's just an obscure terrarium species, but columnaeas are, mm. you're not gonna, not gonna find them in your garden store. Run into those very no. often. That's a fibrosum species type. So okay. that's not a true fibrosum, but it does get spiky. Once it hits maturity, it'll get spikes on the on the uh on the stem here mm -hmm. and they'll actually be very uh the pubescence is just spikes instead of fibrosum being very very hairy so again don't really know what species it is so we labeled it as fibrosum type that's why you guys see af or cf fibrosum or fibrosum type you know it's it's as close as what they know to something that is described. This sure. is a philodendron or curvifolium. It's a true species. That's a really nice, nice one if you can get a pristine leaf that has a nice red rim to it. Oh, but I see it. yeah, this is a little faded, so it depends. What's that one? That's an arg argamantium type. It's another. It's a very nice velvet species, but again, it's not a true species. Beautiful. Yeah. That was one probably from an Echogenera import that we did a long time ago. I got in like 30 or 40 plants from Echogenera whenever I did it. So these are remnants of that import. But yeah, like I said, we haven't done anything since then. I just keep cutting them. That one, that's a good question. I can't remember what I put here. Kind of looks similar to that one, but without the silver on it. Yeah. Might just be bipinifolium. It might be a, a standard. Pretty Whoa, standard philodendron. That. Yeah, that's a schistomaglottis. It's schistomaglottis. Schistomaglottis. Okay. Can you say that five times fast? <laughs> so There's Syngonium rei. Yeah, we have a lot that. of those just around in Windlandii. See, these are mature Dodsonii leaves. Close. I might actually just cut that down, but that's the mature leaf of them. Whoop, sacrificed one. But don't worry, guys. We just put it right back in the soil and we'll grow some new ones. So that's a squamacolli. It's still immature, but it'll get there when it does. Those are beautiful. They have that nice, nice um, horse head shape to them. Kind of like serpents does. Mm -hmm. There's another UPI just kind of oh, chilling. Yeah. Just chilling. Just chilling. <laughs> yeah. That's how they are. This is a really nice shingling species of philodendron back here. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So that is philodendron species shingling because in the dart frog industry we don't nobody has ID'd it and none of us have got it gotten it to its second phase. This is fiber catafilum. It's a really nice philodendron species. Kind of velvety, kinda not. But used to be species Peru. Then we figured out what it was. This is another Calvoa sesifolia. Now with the gorgeous oh pink. Uh, pink polka dots so it should have both white and pink polka dots which is very nice this is just a splendid a small splendid it's a uh, melana cry sometimes ericosum yeah i have a few glorious and splendid just kind of i thrown just in speechless yeah wow look at that one 
Yeah, that's ooh, that's a good species to talk about. Um, I think Ill Exotics talked about this species recently. This is a Rugosum, Philodendron Rugosum. Has like a leathery, thick leaf with a nice elbow margination. Uh, it's a gorgeous plant, very succulent. So it gives a nice contrast to some thinner species when you're creating a terrarium. That is a blue oil fern. I said, I was yes, <laughs> so cool. Very cool. There's some species. cool ones in this. Yes. Oh, wow. um, that's a Dodsonii. That's another Begonia Dodsonii. And the next one? That is an Elastostemma species. It's unidentified as of now. Mm. What's this one? Um, that is another Squamacale. So you guys can probably see what I do here. When I propagate stuff, I usually just throw it in, in the corners of tanks. So then when it's done, I either uproot it and put another one there, like the top cut. So what I'll do is I'll uproot that when it gets bigger. I'll take the top cut and put it back. So it's just a continuous cycle. Then I have this big, robust plant, either for hoarding or for selling, hopefully for selling. And you can see I've done that with a lot of these. This is actually glorious, if you can believe oh, wow. it or not. Um, and glorious sometimes in line of Christ. I mean, it does not even look like that because these are small top cuts that I've taken. This is a Sauteroy small form. So, otherwise known as Sauterini, okay. I guess people call it that now. It's a very unofficial term, but I'll this take it. Um, that is a Monstera Celtipicana. Okay. And a lot of viewers will wow. probably be familiar with that plant. Um, this is a Windland Windlandii too. It's another Equigenera beast. Um, it does not look as good in that tank as it does in some of my others, but it looks pretty healthy. It's healthy. a really nice plant overall. I was hoping to have. These are Esqueletos. They don't look like Esqueletos yet. Yeah. Yep, they are. This is a really healthy specimen of Squamopediolatum. Yeah. So you guys can see. The other good thing about terrariums is all these aerial roots, mm -hmm. they transfer so easily to real ground roots. I can just cut, cut, cut all this all the way down. There's at least 10 plants on there. And I could get 10 new ones in about a month. So more holding species like these white tree frogs. These are great to hold. Oh, these goodness. are great for beginners. They're good eaters. There's one croaking right now. I heard him. He's having oh, a he's time. He's chatting. Yep. <laughs> we have those. We have waxy monkey trot frogs. We've got reed frogs, false tomato frogs. <gasps> yep. They're so. <laughs> they're like little fat guys. Yep. So. <laughs> oh, I love them. They're those. cute. So we do what is have this plant. That is a pedatum. Wow. Waxy monkey frogs are in here, but they're always so hard to find. And they're sleeping right now, because these are tree frogs. So, tree frogs are nocturnal. Dart frogs are actually diurnal, so they're out during the day. They're very interactive. And that's kind of why we do dart frogs, too. Because they're always out in the open. Okay, and this is a gigas. Oh, is <laughs> just kind of thrown in there, just yeah. Just hanging out? Yeah, just hanging out. I overlooked out. them. I know, I do too. I, there's a lot of stuff I'm overlooking, but. I, I was going to say, I like on your terrariums how you do have all the different types, the little ones, the yes, big ones. Yes, yes. Like, Got to have that complex yeah, complexity. Yeah, look down. I did want to show off my yes. polyploides. Oh my goodness. I took a, I took a top cut <gasps> off of him, but these have been, I don't know. I bought it in 2018 when it was only like 300 bucks. But I've seen big ones go for like five grand right now. Really? Yeah, they're insane. But their leaves are just like this, very thin. Not anything like tortum. Very, very hard to get tortum in this. Confused in my opinion. We propagate probably close to 95% of what we have here. Uh, I'm very big in the propagation, conservation, that kind of thing. I'm not big on imports. We haven't, I mean, I've done like two or three imports in my whole life. Um, two of which went well, one didn't. Um, ever since then, I try and buy from hobbyists, other nurseries, things like that, and then just cut, prop, clone, whatever it takes. So these are kind of like the main Vivo Suns here. These are our propagation stations, I guess, so to speak. So this is almost all full of 
begonias and small vines, peperomias. You can see a lot of cell trays with peperomia. So it does take time, but we play the long game here. So a lot of the stuff we get, if it's new, we won't release it for another six to eight months because we won't have a good parent stock ready. So I saw you sell online. Yes, we do 90, again, I'm gonna use the 95 figure. We do 95% of our business online. Really? This whole business was built online. We're not really in a location for walk-in retail. Um, and the store is actually just a afterthought, more or less, for people to pick up their online orders uh -huh. and add on to it. So we do a lot of online. So we ship about anywhere between 60 and 100 packages a week plants, frogs, dry goods, pet supplies, mostly plants. <laughs> More of the same, but different. Again, the same situation here, but just different species. So those are some of those small, the uh, Draco Pelta. So, you this, know, so even one. our rare stuff gets propped, cut up. So a lot of our plants in the mother plant, Vivo Sun, actually get to chop quite often because we have to keep stock. A lot of people ask, when are you gonna get those in? And I'm like, well, whenever they grow. Yeah, you can see a lot of the props are in this one are in the intermediate stage. Okay. And they're almost ready to be sold, but not quite. So you guys probably wouldn't want such a small, small specimen. So these are just getting ready to go out into the world, but not quite. So what kind of grow lights do you use? Um, these are the Para Spectra P1000s. You okay. can find these on Amazon. Usually they're $100 a piece. You might be able to get them for 80 bucks a piece, depending on if they're running a sale or not. So they're very great lights. They have a turn dial on the side. Um, I love how we can't see the turn dial, but <laughs> it brings it up to full sun. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you can blast your plants if you want to. We keep it pretty low. A lot of these are understory species, so they aren't used to full sun. If you want to adapt these to full sun, some of them can take it. Others can only ever take partial. Uh, yes. We do a lot of uh, tubs. So we'll actually cover these. These are chlorostricta green form. It's another type of begonia that you guys might be familiar with. But we actually cover these up for a long time and they're just like this. And then eventually when they get rooted, we put them like that, then we separate them out into two inch pots and then go from there. But we have a lot of a lot of guys that are getting ready. Milana bolata, very popular. Erecta carpa, very popular species. Raja, very popular. Um, all of these are very stunning when they get older. So this is kind of another way. If that plant needs extra humidity or say we take it from a tank and it just can't handle even this, Ambient humidity, which is about 65, 70%. If it's used to 100, the stomatal pores are open, so the leaf will dry out while it's in propagation. So sometimes you have to propagate in enclosed tubs, and that's kind of what this is. So. How often do you open them up? Today? We open them up just to water, which is barely ever because they're in 100% like humidity. So you wouldn't want to water them too much because then they'll cause it to rot. Right. And we do fail. I mean, some of them rot out. It, it's an art form and we're always getting better at it. And I think that there's always room for improvement. This is just kind of, this is a wow. I wanted to show people the Lombasia. Copious pink. This one right here is just such a beautiful plant. One of my favorite species of of it's anything. Gorgeous. Yeah. And then an amphioxus. You can't go to a terrarium store without seeing a really badass amphi. <laughs> Cause these just are more or less terrarium specialty plants. People have grown them outside of terrariums, but they're just amazing these are so cool oh my god they're so cool i love the color tell me you don't like begonias anymore <laughs> you know like how do you not yeah you it's, didn't have to convert me so we can go to the store now but that's like a chlorineura back there this is a 69686 another choco baby this is a domesticum var um those my have been goodness. going for a lot yeah and i you know have more of those bumpy guys down here whoa yeah so it's hard not to show people everything because I feel bad. I feel like I'm 
holding. There's a Ferox up front and then the Milana Bellata. Yeah, the Ferox are cool because the spikes are just so tall. They are. They're insane. Dangerous looking. Yes. But this is just the reptile store. We have the Zoom Ed stuff here, lighting, um, random bags of Excelsior for Fruit Fly Media. Got our leaf litter over here, um, excavator clay, Repta sand, stuff for more desert organisms down there, aquatic stuff over here. Just a little bit of everything. It's not, since we are like a dart frog specialty store, more for frogs, we do have like our own line of everything that we use for frogs, which is like our hydroton for that drainage layer, our, our substrates, which we do have plant substrates available as well. Um, and then we have our leaf litter, of course, for the frogs. And then we, I don't know if we got this tank on camera yet. No, we haven't. These are the Terrabilis oh, mints. Yeah. We have several mint tanks, but this is one of them. This is the one in our store, our store enclosure. So it's still growing in, so you guys can see that it's not really 100% how it should look yet, nice. but it will be. It's got about six more months to grow in, then we'll trim it and then it'll be perfect. Cause we have like a plow mania in here, which obviously can't stay in there. But the frogs needed some cover right away. Why can't the plow mania stay? Uh, Cause those leaves are gonna get massive. <laughs> and it would be, looking way better in our parent vivo sun with dinner plate sized leaves uh, that's just my opinion though so, i agree yeah but like, these are really cool frogs they're I mean, so nice they're so cool they're so cool. one of the best selling frogs that we have they're so beautiful yep. hi guys so they're he's, very cool he's watching me over here <laughs> he's like what's this crazy lady doing they're really really bold so they're always out so. good beginner frogs yes great beginner, beginner frogs. frogs all the philobates are great beginner frogs but this is just our store these are some of our frogs these are some of our plants um again i usually take our customers through the whole thing so this is like what's for sale but so is all that other stuff over there so we usually let people view this stuff first say hey if you don't want any of this stuff we'll go over there and usually they go over there anyway so but this is just some of the stuff we have for sale right now the stuff like you just can't find any of this anywhere no no this is not stuff you're gonna find besides some of the peperomias and i mean a few of the aeroids you're not gonna find any of this stuff in your local garden stores okay, these are definitely specialty plants are these online yes these, most of them should be online. Some of these aren't online. Some of these product shelves don't even exist yet because I haven't had the time to do it. Online is a constant battle of me adding more products, taking the pictures, creating the SKUs, integrating it into our systems. That all actually takes a lot of time if you look at it on a large scale. And I actually participate, unfortunately, in a lot of our daily ops. So I'm still very hands-on, like I did some feeding today. We do what we can here, we all work as a team. So a lot of times like putting new inventory on the website gets put on the back burner. So it's helpful for people to A, come in, B, PM me pictures if you're like interested, what begonias do you have? I'll just snapshot all of them. People circle what they want and I ship it out. It's super easy and I'm easy to work with, so. <laughs> That's how we're operating until my website is flawless. If you want some specialized attention, you come in, hey, I want a tank, I want to pick out some frogs, I want to create it. We create it all on that table over there and you're out the door with your new friends. These are all of our like bugs. These are all wow. isopods. They're roly polies, fancy roly polies. So we have over a hundred different ki kinds of roly polies, if you could believe that. Oh. They help clean up the fecal material in the frog enclosures. If you've heard the word bioactive, that's kind of what people use these for. Right. And there's also species, again, that are rare, so people keep them as pets. We have roaches too, the same scenario. Fruit flies are not super interesting to anybody, but frog people it looks crazy in there but they're very manageable because they don't fly. This is the quarantine Vivo Sun. So anything that gets brought in here uh, that I bought at like a nursery or anything like that gets put in here is actually sprayed. Um, so this does get chemically treated. And then you can see a frog tank in here. So obviously not everything gets chemically treated. <laughs> this is my friend's frog tank is overrun with aphids. So we're treating it with lace wings, trying to get the high, high humidity in there is gonna prevent the aphids from reproducing, 
we're gonna try and tackle those. So this is where that is. Once they're done with quarantine, then we bring them into the facility. But we don't wanna spread pests into the facility. Yeah. So everything gets put into quarantine Fascinating. first. Fascinating. This is shipping and manufacturing. This is where we keep uh, and process all of our orders. It gets pretty crazy in here. The last five days of the month is when I'm restocking plants. Because it's so hard to inventory absolutely everything in one day and I have so many other obligations, sometimes it takes me a little bit of time. But if people have like a wish list or anything or they want certain plants, they need to reach out to me and then kind of, you know, I won't put it in stock. I'll, I'll let you know if it's available. Then you say yes or no. And then if I pass it off to the three people that want it, let's say I was gonna put Florida Beauty in stock and two people reach out to me. Well, I'll reach out to those people first. So if you guys want plants, make sure you reach out to me and then rely on the website because I might have something for you that, you know, I was gonna put on the website, but if you want it, then I'll give it to you first. So you'll get first tips. But yeah. So we do a lot of Brahms because those frogs actually raise their young inside of them. I learned a lot today about yeah. frogs. Yeah, I'm sorry. I talk a lot too. <laughs> Thank you. It's, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, look at all those. Oh my gosh, how incredible was that tour? I have to say, I learned so much and so thoroughly enjoyed um, filming that. And Alex was so nice to let me come out and film that for you guys. Again, if the, you see a plant that you're interested in or a frog that you're interested in, I'm so, I almost came home with like 10 different frogs. They were so amazing. Um, I resisted though, I resisted. It was tough, I'm thinking about it still. Um, but anyways, if you see a plant that you're interested in or a frog, take a screenshot of it. And I've included Alex's information in my description below for you guys so you can, you know, take a, a send it over to him and, and he'll link up and, and try to help you guys out. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you subscribe if you have not already. That way my episodes will show up in your newsfeed. And um, also look me up on Instagram. Again, big thank you to glassesusa.com for sponsoring this episode. Episode. I've included a link in my description below. I recommend starting with the virtual try-on tool. I've also included all the links to the different styles that I wore during this episode. So, all right, guys, I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day. You'll definitely be seeing me soon. Bye.